Good morning, everyone. Nice to see you all. Welcome to Sunday worship for Northminster and St. David's United Churches. Welcome to everybody who is here in person as well as to everybody worshiping online with us. It is good we can gather together in these varied ways, giving thanks for even the technology and the bits and bytes and the people who know how to make them work for us. So thank you to our our SALT team and, and to our hosts and hospitality and, and to everyone who's in our midst who shares, um, shares your gifts in your varied and many ways. Thank you. Everything that you need for worship this morning is found in both the program you received as well as in PowerPoint in front of you. So follow along as you are able. At times we may invite you to stand, but again, only if comfortable. Stay seated if that's better for you. And a little bit later in our worship, our children and youth will be leaving for their Kids Zone program. So watch for that, and you're welcome to all uh, join in in Kids Zone um, this morning. And they'll be coming back for communion. So we do have a volunteer who will invite them to come back for the end of our worship. On that communion note, hopefully you all received the little package with the elements in it. If you didn't, you could just put your hand up and we'll make sure you get one. And for those who are at home, um, for those who are at home, do find something that is going to represent the bread and the cup for you this morning. Because it is Pentecost Sunday, and we hear the scripture reading from Acts, that it says the people spoke in many and varied voices, and still everyone understood what the other was saying. If there's anybody here, and I'm sure there are, who know the Lord's Prayer in different languages, does anybody know the Lord's Prayer in a language other than English? Suzanne is French, knows French. What else? Does anyone else know a language? Pardon? Latin? Wow, great. That's amazing. If you know the Lord's Prayer in any language, I'll invite you during the Lord's Prayer to speak that in whatever language you are comfortable. And we'll have many varied voices in our sharing of the Lord's Prayer this morning. And now let's light our candles. Thank you, Ruth, for helping again. <laughs> There once was a man who did such amazing things and said such wonderful things that people followed him and they wanted to know who he was. And so they asked him and he said to them, I am the light of the world. And then with that same Christ light, we light our rainbow candle, affirming and recognizing that same light within each and every one of us, whoever we are, whoever we love, and wherever we are from. And we also light our land acknowledgement candle. This candle is symbolic of our commitment to understanding and learning and action. We have a long history, don't we, of brokenness in our relationships with this land and its people. And so today we recommit to our responsibility, to the work of truth and reconciliation, and give thanks for this place that we are so blessed to live and work and worship and play on. So it is Pentecost Sunday. We're going to experience the lovely imagery of wind and fire and being moved by the Spirit today in our worship. And how wonderful it is, these kites have been hung. Isn't that beautiful? Just again of the reminder of the Spirit, the wind at work in our midst. Wind is a very common image of the Holy Spirit. And when the Spirit wind blew through those early first disciples, they had no idea where it was going to take them. But they didn't seem to fight it. They let the Spirit lead. Winds in nature clear out leaves and debris, don't they? Or they bring more in and we have to work in our yard. But sometimes, though, that wind is also 
powerful enough to bend and to break. Winds can also cause damage to our structures, though I don't ever think that's wind's intention. Perhaps it's just that our human structures are in the way. So how has the Spirit been blowing through our churches this year? Have we been fighting the wind, or have we been letting it lead? Let's pray. It is responsive, and you can join in where it says all, though maybe we'll have to use our bulletins. Is the PowerPoint not working? Okay, so, so please um, pull out your program, share if someone next to you doesn't have it, and we'll respond where it says all. Holy One, we are not sure what it would be like if the Holy Spirit blew through our churches again as it did on that day of Pentecost. However, we want to speak the language you have given louder and more clearly in our lives and church. So we pray, come Holy Spirit, come. Pour out your fire of love upon us to be the body of Christ in a world that is often hurting, hungry, and cynical. Come, Holy Spirit, and revive your church. Inspire us with Christ's vision for a world reborn. Help us to recognize our gifts for ministry and to use them in service of others. Transform our hearts and our minds Fill us with love that overflows into the world. Gracious God, give us a glimpse of your kingdom, emerging around us and drawing us into the new things you are doing in the world. Amen. The peace of Jesus Christ be with you all. In our act of worship, we Extend that peace to those in our midst. Peace be with you.
be seated. I have a story I'd like to read, and if anyone would like to see the pictures close up, you could come up to the front and join me. Or if not, I'll just try and hold the book up so you can see it really well. I see some in the balcony. Can you see if I just hold it up, do you think? Maybe? Okay, let's try. This is great. So this is a lovely book I found at the library called Say Hello. And I thought what a perfect fit it is as we talk about the Pentecost story and how despite of, or maybe even because of, all the many languages spoken, everyone could still understand what each other was saying. And so this is a story about a girl named, oh my goodness, I've already forgotten, Carmelita. So this is Carmelita's day, and it's called Say Hello. Carmelita gets up early in the morning. She helps her mama make her favorite breakfast. Today we visit Abuela Rosa, mama says. Look at there, they are getting their breakfast ready. Even the dog is helping, or sampling, I wonder, maybe both. After breakfast, Carmelita hurries and gets dressed, then gets Manny. They walk all the way down 9th Avenue. Buenos dias, Senor Enrico calls out. Buenos dias, woof. Shalom, says Mrs. Rosen. Shalom, shalom, woof. Choir can't see as good, can you? See all these lovely, colorful pictures? <laughs> I'll hold up the odd ones so you can see them. They stop in at the Japanese restaurant to say hello. Konnichiwa, konnichiwa, woof. Down the street, they meet Joseph and his parents, who have just come back from Kenya. Jambo, Jambo, woof, right? You know it. They pass by a bakery. Carmelita stops to look in the window. Let's go in and get some cookies, her mama says. There's the, the picture of the bakery. See, it looks like a yummy bakery. I think I want to go inside, too. Bonjour. Bonjour. Woof. And the, and the baker says, your dog speaks French, too, smiling. Oh, a halal butcher. Al-salam, alaykum. Al-salam, alaykum. Woof which is Arabic. Then they stop and look at the pizza store. Ciao, ciao. And then ni hao, ni hao, woof. In the park, Carmelita meets her friends, Max and Angel. And they say, hey, yo, what's up? Woof! You're one smart Snoop Dogg, Angel says. When they turn the corner, Abuela Rosa is waiting for them. Hola, hola, woof. Manny seems to know what I'm saying, Abuela Rosa says with a wink. Manny knows how to say hello in many languages, Carmelita says smiling. Jingle, jingle, it's the ice cream truck, Abuela Rosa says. And like all the friends gather around the truck and Manny says, woof. That means Manny wants some too, Carmelita says and gives Manny a big hug. The end. There we go. 
Let's now share in a Pentecost prayer on video. Dear God, on Pentecost, we remember when you said, we remember when you sent the Holy Spirit. God, on Pentecost, we remember when you sent the Holy Spirit to the friends and followers of Jesus. With a mighty wind and tongues of fire, the people from all over were able to hear and understand God's word. Guided by the Holy Spirit, the disciples shared the good news. Red is for God's love shared for all the world. Orange is for the tongues of fire connecting us to each other. Yellow is for the sun that shines upon us. Green is for new beginnings, new life, and the beginnings of the Christian church in the world. Blue is for the wind blowing the power of the Holy Spirit. Violet is for God's words spreading peace to all the world. Help us remember that you are always with us. Help us to be like the disciples. Fill us with the Holy Spirit and help us go forth into the world to share your word with others. Help us to live as Jesus taught us and to love one another. Amen. Please be seated and we'll light our Christ candle for our children and youth who can take this as they leave for their kids own program. Jessa, I think you're the closest this morning. Would you like to grab that? And I think there's some littler ones coming down from the balcony to join you and some others at the back. That's great. I noticed that the choir is in Pentecost colors today. I love that. Well done, <laughs> thank you. We'll enjoy some music now. It's your last Sunday before summer, isn't it, as a sanctuary choir? We'll enjoy today, especially.
When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. वे सब पवित्र आत्मा से भर गए और जैसे आत्मा ने उन्हें बोलने की सामर्थ्य दिए वे अन्य अन्य भाषा में बोलने लगे तेव बदा पवित्र आत्मा की भरपूर गया जुदी भाषाओ बोलवा शुरू कर पवित्र आत्मा ते उन्हें आकर वालों सामर्थ्य अपने Wote wakachazwa na Roho Mtakatifu wakaanza kunena lugha mbalimbali kadri vile Roho alivyowezesha. Yellavaru parishuddha aadmavu niranjavaragi andaru parishuddha aatmato nindina vare a aatma variki. Ve sabhi pavitra aatma se bhavito ho uthe. Gubraha variat bi'araf kalate आत्मा आनन भकारे कथा को बोले धरिले इ फोरन टोस जेनो द स्पिरिटु सांतो इ कोमेसरो ना हलर इन लैंग्वेज सेगुन ल स्पिरिटु लिस दा मा एलारम परिषद आत्मा नरने ब्राय आत्मा और के उच्चर पेन नालगे तो बोले अन्य परिषदले समस दु सौन्यों इ चुमान आ जासा सौन्यों इ शिकिले देरो काकी धारन नारा भांगनरो बारा विषय केसिदा नाउ एट द सेम टाइम इन जेरूसलेम द वर गॉड फियरिंग ज्यूज from every nation under heaven and at this sound a crowd gathered and was bewildered because each of them heard them speaking in the language of each amazed and astonished they asked are not all these who are speaking galileans and how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya and Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them proclaiming the wonders of God in our own tongues. All were amazed and confused, saying to one another, "What does this mean?" But others sneered and said, ah, "They're filled with new wine." Peter, though, stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd: "People of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose." but only 9 o'clock in the morning no this is what was spoken through the prophet joel in the last days it shall be declares god that i will pour out my spirit on everyone your sons and daughters shall prophesy and the young men shall see visions and the old women shall dream dreams even upon your slaves both the men and women I pour my spirit and they shall prophesy and they shall prophesy I will do wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and smoky mist the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood red before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day then everyone 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 
everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here's what I think we get right. Here's what I think we get right about Pentecost. That Pentecost is the day in which we celebrate that the church was born. And, you know, we probably should have had cake today. It's a birthday. It's the birthday of the church. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit made evident, as the story says, by tongues of flame and rushing wind creates this community of believers who are empowered to share the good news of Jesus with the world. That wind and that fire are metaphors. Acts does not really say that there was wind and fire, but that something strange and mysterious and unexplainable and powerful happened that day. And Perhaps the only way then that people could really describe what was happening was to say it was like wind and fire and it drew the attention of others to come and see what was happening. And note that the important thing, the really important thing, was not the wind or the flames, but that the people knew for sure that something significant was happening. And they knew that God was with them in this very powerful way. They noticed something. They paid attention. That's really important. Knowing that the disciples beforehand had actually been hiding behind closed doors in fear, then had the courage to run into the streets and tell everyone about their experience and what they knew about Jesus. That was a significant turning point. So yes, it's the birthday of the church. But here's perhaps what we get wrong or what we don't get right about Pentecost. Pentecost didn't just happen once a long, long time ago. There are in Acts, for example, many Pentecosts, we might say, Multiple times, that is, when the Spirit is poured out and amazing things happen and people are moved and a movement forms and there's conversion or transformation of sorts and people come to faith. Think about when Philip, for example, baptizes the Ethiopian eunuch. Or Paul's conversion himself or Lydia, the seller of the purple cloth and her own transformation. Each of these stories are extensions of the Holy Spirit that starts at Pentecost, but doesn't end there. It continues throughout the history of the early church, and it's evident in our scriptures. It also does not stop at Acts. There are a variety of moments in the church's history Think of the Reformation, for example, with Martin Luther, or periods in history that may have been revivals in the church movement. Sometimes those are referred to as great awakenings in the church. How about, as well, the, the birth of the United Church of Canada? It will be 97 years old on June 10th. But think back to that time where, where the Spirit brought denominations and people and conversations together and a a, a, a church was birthed almost a hundred years ago. And it's not just big events. Pentecost happens in our local contexts as well. Moments where we, people, community are moved and there is a need perhaps and people come together and the outcome of that sharing far exceeds is so much more than the sum of the skills and the gifts in that moment. 
I think back to even like the 2013 floods, that was nine years ago now, and how community came together in Calgary and in High River. I think of how community came together with the, the fires in Fort McMurray. What year was that? I'm, it's, it was since 2013, right? But moments where people see a need and people come together and they fill that need, whether that's for support or food or, or shelter, more currently, how community is coming together to support refugees, whether from Syria or Afghanistan or, or, or the Ukraine. I think our Pride Sunday is also a Pentecost moment each year when so many churches join together to show solidarity and publicly faith-driven be an explicit example of Christ's love in the world for the LGBTQ plus community. I also think about this partnership, St. David's and Northminster. I can't help but think that the Holy Spirit was at work when our regional minister, Stephen Harper, noticed that there were two congregations in need and who also had gifts to offer, don't we? And that maybe, just maybe, a partnership might be a possibility. So Pentecost isn't over. Why should we be surprised by that? In John 14, it says, Jesus makes an astounding promise to his disciples. He says that even if they have a hard time believing what he says, based on his words alone, at least they can believe it because of the works they've seen him do. And then he goes on to say, very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these. So did you hear that? That we who believe in Jesus will do even greater works than he. Feeding, teaching, healing, giving life, advocating, risking, striving, whatever it is, being a presence. Maybe the important question then isn't, did you hear that, those words from Jesus, but rather, do you believe it? I see people I'm around continuing that story that started so very long ago by sharing their faith, living with confidence, or, or even if you're not confident or you're worried or you're afraid, still trying, because that's important, <laughs> claiming the power of God in their lives, reaching out in love to others around them, and more than that. I see them, that is, I see you, I see the church that continues to be created anew by the Spirit. And then the thing is, the more that I, I name this and recognize it, I think the more I see it, the more I'm aware of it. And the easier it gets to name and the easier it gets to see and so on and so on and so on. So Pentecost moments in our lives and in our faith communities are still very real. The vision and the work of the Spirit continues to fall afresh on us and invites us again and again to be participants in that. So now it makes me wonder, if we're doing all this or trying, where will the next Pentecost be? Where might our communities of faith respond to God's call next? Where will we feel empowered by the Holy Spirit to respond in faith to that call from God to see the needs of the community and respond? Each time we make sense of our lives and our experiences, each time we identify needs, listen for a call and respond, each time we look at all of this through the lens of our scriptures, we are connected and we are connecting to our faith and to life and to preparing ourselves more fully for an encounter with the living God. 
So let's trust that the next Pentecost is happening in and through our lives. May it be so. Amen. We're going to sing again a song that, that talks about, reflects on, describes the spirit at work in our lives. It's called God is Here, and we'll stand if comfortable doing so, and we'll sing. Let's join in.
mind, is there anybody else who doesn't yet have the elements they need, the bread for, the, for communion? Just put your hand up and we can have someone bring it to you. Everyone has it. Choir, you have yours too? Your grape? And, okay, great. We come to this table. This is not St. David's table or Northminster's table. It's not the table of the United Church of Canada. This is God's table and all are welcome to come and receive and be part of this community at this table. We also invite God to be part of us, all of us in celebration, breaking bread together we prepare in this moment to remember Jesus, all of us touched by the spirit of this most extravagant love. In this sacred place, we hope to be empowered by our feast, all of us with hearts burning like the flame of Pentecost, for there is so much love to celebrate. Here we offer praise and thanksgiving here we remember the words and the deeds of the one called Jesus of Nazareth. Born in a stable, raised in the home of a carpenter, Jesus was moved by the Spirit of God again and again to bring about the realm of God in our world. People rediscovered their humanity, became filled with new meaning and purpose and found new courage to live, not just for themselves, but for others. Still, humanity turned and turns away. And today we need this refreshing winds of God to be the breath of life in us. And so we join with all the saints and angels of every time and place singing. God of hope, we bring before you those whose hope is lost. By this meal, may we be renewed to carry forth your message and your vision. Breathe into us a hope-filled yearning to be part of your future Pentecosts. God of wind and fire, we thank you for the promise of restoration, of life after death of spring after winter, of as many fresh starts as we need. It is by God's grace that we trust in the promise of a new day and a new life. Remembering this story, we, it's a story that we celebrate. It's a season and it's a reason we feast. We celebrate the gift of life, community, that we are God's church. In our hurts and our healing, our laughter and tears, we are many yet one, who are different but who walk together and welcome all. When we see injustices, we must be about making them right. When there is brokenness, we have God's promise of forgiveness and new beginnings. And we remember the power of being God's beloved communion. When Jesus was at table with his friends, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he passed it to his friends and they feasted together and they were changed. 
and continuing to offer hospitality, he took a cup of wine and he blessed it and passed it around the table and the holy was revealed. This same meal is now offered to each and every one of us. We gladly accept it, knowing that in any ordinary moment like this, God is also revealed to us. By remembering the ministry of Jesus in this way now, we claim our common heritage as we proclaim the mystery of faith. And in any language you may know, we invite you to share together in our many voices of the words of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I will break the bread and pour the cup, and then we will share together after that in our elements we've received. the bread of life. Thanks be to God. The cup of blessing. Thanks be to God. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us feast. Let us now share together in our prayer after communion. Holy Spirit, move among us this day. As part of God's beloved community, bless now our work and our words, that we may extend your welcome to the world in what we do and by who we are. May the Spirit's power make it so and may the celebration continue in each step we take. Amen. We take a moment now to bless the many ways we give of our offering here on a Sunday morning or through PAR or Tithely or e-transfer, and of course the many gifts we share throughout our day-to-day -day lives. Let us pray. We offer you, transforming spirit, these gifts. 
continue to inspire our givings and bring life to them. We pray that they may provide direction, inspire a revisioning of purpose, and encourage us to discern your direction in our lives. Bless us and all we give. Amen. Most announcements are printed in the bulletin or the, the announcements you received at the back and as well in your Friday emails both congregations receive, but I will remind you that St. David's folks are being asked to grab your coffee quickly and come back into the sanctuary for your um, congregational budget meeting today. I will be joining you for that. As well, um, Northminster folks are invited to grab your coffee and stay and visit. You don't have to come to the meeting. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> of course, you're welcome to come and listen if you'd like to know more about St. David's. Everyone's welcome to stay. As well, um, two announcements. Northminster has had a long-standing partnership with the Aboriginal Friendship Center. Through the month of June, in the red box in the lobby, we will be collecting gently used clothing items and tents and shoes for their, um, their many clients who sleep rough, it's called, sleeping outside. And so if you have, in the month of June, any time, please drop them off on Sundays or during the week, and we will ha be happy to get those to the Friendship Center. So thank you for your support of that. And next Sunday after church, we're going to have a picnic. So plan on bringing your own picnic lunch, your own bag lunch, bring a lawn chair. We'll gather outside on the grass and have a visit together. And even if the weather doesn't look good, bring your lunch. We can always eat together inside, all right? That's all I have for announcements. Was there anything else? Friendship Club is finished. That was a wonderful dinner on Friday night. We don't need to, wasn't that great? It was so good, about 65 people were out for that. I don't think we have any other announcements. So it's time to sing, yes? Oh yes, and what time is that? Okay, and I'm sorry, I don't know, I know her last name, Godfrey. What was her first name? Carly Jean. Her service is on Saturday at, at 11. And everyone is welcome to attend that at that Memorial Day. Wonderful. All right, well, let's stand together. We're going to now sing our closing hymn. You'll have to get ready to move a little bit for this one. It's a fun one to, to sing along and dance to. Come, O Holy Spirit.
as you enter a new week, may you experience God's presence. May you feel God pouring out the Holy Spirit over your heads and your thoughts and in the words of your lips, over your hearts and your feelings and your emotions and your compassion for all others, and over your hands and your feet as you put into action all that God commands. During this week, may the grace of Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. Amen. Would you like to sit as the choir sings a blessing for us? Please do.